G'day folks, it's the Maple Monkey here again with another Marvel United gameplay video for you. And we've got the um, official stuff back on the table today, so we had some great fun with uh, some homebrew stuff recently. Um, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some of the official content from this time. I think it's the first battle we're doing with um, the Multiverse Core Set, uh, one of the villains from there. And that's going to be the Mighty Maestro. So... Uh, Big old old man Hulk, I guess, <laughs> variant of the Hulk or future version of the Hulk or something to do with the Hulk. Um, but we're going to be using him. So uh, we we can see we're going to be um, coming in at either three, four or five uh, health. Uh, we're going to be playing four heroes. So we've got uh, five health today. Um, if we have a look at the back of him, he has a special setup which says keep the Rick Jones token aside. So we've done that. We've got that aside uh, within reach of the players. And that's pretty much it. We've got some supervillain information there as well. And other than that, we're getting ready to rock and roll. So um, his special rules are that when a hero is KO'd, uh, he doesn't activate his BAM. Uh, instead, he gains a health and may go above starting value. So as you can see, uh, for a gigantic Hulk, he has fairly low health there. So you can imagine that's going to... Uh, probably skyrocket throughout the game um, and it says here when two missions are completed now um, normally when two missions are completed that means we've made them vulnerable so uh, in this case we're not only making them uh, the villain vulnerable but we're placing the Rick Jones token uh, in the location opposite uh, Maestro's now if Rick Jones is not in Maestro's location, Maestro ignores the first two damage he would take each turn. Yikes. Now, um, there was a game I played recently. It might have been... I can't remember whether it was the homebrew battle or a, a regular battle, but I, uh, I messed up because there was a character who was ignoring one damage at the beginning of their turn. I think they were in a particular location, and I, uh, I missed that in, in the sort of final turn or two of the game and uh yeah so that sort of like uh was a bit annoying so i'll try my best to remember that uh detail there but essentially if rick jones is not in maestro's location maestro ignores the first two damage he would take each turn uh heroes can take rick jones with them whenever they move or move him to an adjacent location by spending uh a heroic action uh let's have a look uh bam now this is where <laughs> he's going to get a lot of health here because he does three damage to a hero uh, in his location when he bams. Plus, if there's any overflow, he gains a health too. May go above starting value. So if one or more tokens cannot be uh, added to a location, he gains a health. So he's going to be getting pretty angry and pretty strong. So we'll put that down there. Uh, so that is uh, Maestro. Now we'll put his five health on there. Now all of his... Threats are the same. They're these dogs of war. Uh, so they come with three health and they deal a damage to one hero in this location. So nothing too fancy there, nothing too complex, but lots of them. Every single location is dangerous for us because if he bams, we're taking a hit essentially in that location. Okay. Um, so his normal... Oh, sorry, he has normal mission. So he has the threat uh, clear sorry defeat threats rescue civilians and clear threats so um he's going to be trying to beat up as many thugs as possible uh or sorry we're going to be trying to beat up as many thugs as possible we're going to be trying to rescue a bunch of civilians and we're also going to be trying to clear these threats which in this case are the dogs of war if we can complete two of those missions um well first of all uh, we put rick jones into play second of all he becomes vulnerable if we only complete one of the missions at that point he becomes under pressure and starts acting every two hero turns rather than rather than three um and if we can clear all three of the threats well then we get uh, i think each hero gets to immediately draw a card which is like a little boost to our health um i think that's pretty much it uh, explaining the uh the villain there so let's have a look at him here he is Maestro, big mighty tough guy. All right, so um, I don't know much about him. I do remember in it was an old uh, like iPad game or something called Marvel Contest of Champions or something, and he was like a big big bad guy in that. So uh, coincidentally, that's where I sort of first encountered Kang as well. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's where I know him from. Now let's have a look here at the team that we're going to be. Um, 
facing him with, and that's going to be, uh, we've got Hulkling, who I thought was some sort of Hulk, because he's big and green, but apparently he's nothing to do with Hulk, he's like a, a Scree? No, Scree, not Scroll, a <laughs> Scree, uh, scr mixing up my Cree and my Scrolls. Uh, I think he's some sort of a Scroll or something, isn't he, and he can transform into all different sorts of things, so. Uh, we have, this guy is Speed, uh, he's like super fast, I think he's one of, uh, I was going to say Quicksilver, he's one of Scarlet Witch's kids, I think. Uh, this is Wiccan, uh, who is another one of uh, Scarlet Witch's kids. He's like a wizard or something. And uh, we've got Iron Lad. There we go, he's like a, speaking of Kang, he's like a young Kang, isn't he? Who dresses up like Iron Man, uses Kang's like future technology to build himself a cool suit. Um, so we're using these guys, uh, and you might already know who these guys are. They're the Young Avengers, or some of the members of the uh, Young Avengers team. And um, someone in a recent video asked me to show these guys off, so well, that's why we've got these guys in uh, in play. So, um, and we are going to be using their equipment. So um, I've got because I thought this is pretty fun. Uh, the Hulkling, where is he? He's got Nega Wedding Ring. Uh, so he can, if Wiccan's in play, we can move directly to Wiccan to like, I don't know, rescue or team up or something. Um, or we can, on a villain turn, ignore the first damage we would take. So that might keep us alive for one extra turn sort of thing. So um, if we have to flip it face down once we've used it, we can get it back by discarding an action token. Uh, so there we go, and it's uh, if not just us, but also if we can does that. So this is Hulkling's card here, okay. Um, and then we've also got Excelsior, so he's got a special sword. Uh, this is one of those permanent ones. So once during each of your turns, you may treat a heroic as a punch, uh, but at the end of your turn, you may discard one um, action token to give Excelsior to another hero. So you can actually pass it around. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but if it gets flipped face down, we have to remove it from the game. So that's the old Hulkling. Uh, let's have a look at his hand of cards. We have one, two, uh, three, that's right. So he's got one, uh, one starting hand card. I better just make sure he doesn't have any others. Nope. All right, and we've taken his um, double wilds out as well because we're using uh, equipment with him. Um, now, so let's have a look at his starting hand here. Uh, this is Healing Factor. So as long as this card is face up in the storyline, if you have only one card in your hand, at the end of the villain turn, you may draw a card. So uh, not the most useful, I guess, in this scenario, since he's mostly going to be getting hit with these big uh, three attack, sort of, uh, or three damage hits. So that's not great. But what he also has... I guess it's not bad against the uh, Dogs of War or Hounds of War or whatever they're called. Um, but he's also got this special card here which says, Set up, place this card in front of you, uh, face up. Uh, Hulkling can use the special effects on the hero card placed next to this card as if it had been played by him in the storyline. However, that hero, um, that hero card sorry, is not considered to be either in your hand or in the storyline. But we can use it as if we had done that, so... Um, now let's have a look here. Impersonating. So, uh, at the end of your turn, if there are no, uh, if there is no hero card next to this card, you may choose the starting hand card of any hero not in play and place it next to this card. Okay, and then uh, if you are KO'd, remove that hero card from the game. It can't be chosen anymore. So basically, each time you get KO'd, you've got to sort of cycle through. And choose different abilities. So there we go. So that's kind of fun. It's kind of like a precursor to Beast Boy, I guess. So uh, let's just draw two more cards off the top of his deck there. We've got a single punch and a single move. So, all right. Let's have a look. Now, the next character, well, he doesn't have any starting hand cards, um, but we've taken his double wilds out because he does have some equipment. So this is Wiccan. He's like a wizard. Uh, we've got a single, well, these are not great uh, opening hand cards. He's got a single star, moving a punch, and he's got, oh, wild magic. 
choose, uh, choose move to any location or another hero in your location draws a card or reveal the top card of the master plan deck. Oh, that's cool. It's got a wild as well. Okay. Uh, but he also happens to have this one here. Use on your turn if Hulkling is in play. So now this is another one of these uh, Nega wedding rings. So, what is it, Wiccan? Yeah, this is Wiccan's. So, uh, Wiccan can do that same effect, but he's looking for Hulkling so he can move to. Uh, to Hulkling's location because these these two guys are married so that's where these these two uh, rings come into it so um, or use on a villain turn ignore the first damage you would take uh, then turn this face down so essentially it's the same thing except you can just sort of go uh, back and forth to each other's locations I guess and same deal at the back here so this time your Hulkling can uh, discard an action token to flip this back up. So they kind of work in tandem, those two characters. Um, I guess a bit like um, Cloak and Dagger and some of those other characters. I think Black Bolt and Medusa kind of work sort of similar where they've got certain aspects of their decks or their equipment cards or whatever it might be that sort of like allow them to sort of like team up. Um, now this uh, is Iron Lad. Now I've, I've just realised, I think, here it is, yep. Yeah. He's got equipment too, so he shouldn't have this in here. Just noticed that. All right, so we'll chuck these back in here. No starting hand cards, so we'll just one, two, three. See what he's up to. He's got a star. He's got a move and a punch. Don't they all have stars and moves and punches? I think we've drawn the same opening hand. Uh, and he's got a time ship. So he's got a big, looks like a blimp or something. Um, so he can move, but he can also move in wild as well. So. Go. And he has this interesting card here. Uh, let's have a look. Let it focus there. Neurokinetic Armor. So we can use it on our turn. Until the beginning of your next turn, you cannot uh, take any damage. And for each damage you would take, punch in uh, your location. Then turn this face down. Uh, and then we can bring it back by discarding two action tokens. So... That's pretty handy, and well, it could be pretty handy. And then we've got uh, speed. So this guy, we've left the um, left the double wilds in because he does not have any equipment. Alrighty then. And he doesn't have any starting hand cards. So we'll just see what his three are. Um, let's have a look here. We've got the next villain turn. You may discard one. Uh, movement token to prevent one damage you would take okay right uh, next to villain turn you may discard one uh, movement token to prevent any damage you would take okay but it doesn't have any movement token so and there's no starting hand card that sort of generates movement tokens so i'm guessing there's some cards in his deck that give him movement tokens there we go he's got a wild as well but these two are the same but they have different uh actions there Alrighty then, well, so that is it. Um, we've got uh, the locations now. Hopefully these will come up as we go around and sort of ho hopefully take care of these dogs of war. Um, but I've tried to put in a bunch of locations that um, either seemed like they were fun, like I'd used them before and thought they were fun, or that maybe I hadn't used before on, on camera. So I don't know if we've used the United Nations. We've got Project Pegasus, the Raft, I don't think I've used before. I know I haven't used the Avengers Mountain either. That looks kind of fun. Um, but we've got Sakaar, which I think has been in one of the videos, and the TVA headquarters seemed like a bit of a fun one as well. Um, uh, this one here, Sakaar has, uh, whenever a hero anywhere uses or discards an action token, uh, they get placed there, and then I think underneath that, Hounds of War, there's a, or Dogs of War, there's a thing I can go and, uh, as the end of turn effect, I can pick up tokens and stuff, so... Uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, well, I think that's everything. I think we can uh, get down to the table and uh, <laughs> see what Maestro's got in store for us. Let's check it out. Okay, so he has his deck here. We've got everything ready to go. I think we're looking good. Uh, just before we get started, one of the things I thought would be fun about this uh, scenario is kind of like a get off my lawn sort of thing. So we've got the old guy <laughs> and the young Avengers. So um, that's kind of cool. Maybe they're trick or treating or something as well because it's like a. October isn't it so uh, sort of Halloween is, is coming up so this is kind of a <laughs> we're getting a few themes out of the way here we're doing some um, 
Halloween stuff. We're doing a bit of uh, Young Avengers. Um, and apologies, I forget who, who it was that asked for the Young Avengers, but hopefully this will be uh, enjoyable. I have also, um, uh, just on that note, I've played with uh, Stature and Kate Bishop as well, um, and they're pretty fun as well. So I'm hoping these guys are going to be fun as well because they seem like uh, a good group of characters to sort of be able to uh, team up together. Um, one thing I thought, uh, I thought, oh, I'm really clever here <laughs> with this... Um, this ability to take a starting hand card, I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I've heard about how um, nasty um, this combo of having uh, a portal to limbo that Dark Child has. So you can basically take your character and remove them from the table and any danger of being hurt. Um, and then they can also come out from limbo anywhere they like sort of thing. And I thought, oh, that'll be really, really handy. But unfortunately, on the Limbo card, uh, right down the bottom, it says that um, unless you're Magic or Dark Child, which Hulkling is not, we're going to take damage in uh, <laughs> in Limbo anyway. So I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe that's not the best combo. Um, yeah. So, not the great master plan that I thought it was going to be. So we'll see how we go. All right, now, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to start with a card uh, next to this one because it says at the end of your turn, if there is no hero card, uh, put that there. And as part of the special setup, it doesn't say anything about putting a hero card down to start with. So we don't get any special bonus, unfortunately, from this first round. Um, we're just going to have to go in with, with uh, without it. All right, so let's have a look at what Maestro's doing. Hercule dokely. Uh oh. My goodness. Alright, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So he's moving three. Which means whenever you see that three on the first turn, you know what? Oh, we're in for a bit of pain here. Um, I was hoping, oh, there's a bit of text here, so maybe there's no ban. But nope, unfortunately there is a ban as well. So he's moved three. He's going to deal with ban. So I mean, someone is getting hit straight up. Um, you know what? Oh man, Hulkling. If Hulkling gets KO'd... Oh well, you know what? Hold on a second. This is probably not a bad time for Hulkling to get KO'd. There's no hero card next to this card. If you were KO'd, remove that hero card. Yeah, alright. Well, since we've got nothing in play there, and this healing factor... I could... this could be a mighty mistake here, but I feel like that's not going to be as... Um, prevalent a thing. So, in this particular game, it's because we're getting hit for three. I know the Dogs of War are probably going to be nipping at us, but... Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these at the bottom. Hmm, which one do I want to put? Maybe the movement. Um, I'll take the hit with Hulkling. He'll get KO'd. Unfortunately, that's going to give another health. Alrighty then. Uh, so that's three damage, yep. Um, then all the Dogs of War are going to deal some damage, so this is something I can see myself forgetting <laughs> throughout the game too, so feel free to uh, free to throw things at me through the screen <laughs> if you can to remind me. Um, so who's going to take a hit here? Uh, I mean, we could use the Wedding Rings here to sort of block a bit of damage or something, couldn't we? But should we... Maybe save that. Um, what do we want to go for with uh, our missions? I feel like we want, definitely want to be taking care of some of these dogs of war. So we we'll probably want to spend a lot of punches on that. So I kind of want to work on the other one as civilian. So I want to keep some stars going. Maybe speed. Yeah. Alright, speed's just going to lose this single wild. Okay, um, so the Dogs of War have, have nipped at speed there. Um, we've done the three damage. Now it says here, put back into play two all oh two already cleared threats. Oh man, has he got more of these? In the next two, lock, uh, two clockwise locations with no threats. So I guess we got lucky that that didn't happen now, but oof, not great. We do have some civilians coming out here though. So that gives us some stuff to rescue. Um, Alright, well, let's come out of the gate strong. Well, let's, now this happens at the start of our turn, at the end of, oh, sorry, at the end of our turn. So let's wake up with 
Hong Kling and see what he's up to. He's got a, here we go, heroic and a punch this time, that's a little bit better. We've got a wild, we've got a single heroic, and we've got, uh, what's this say, metamorphic, metamorphic adaptation. Perform actions matching the symbols at the bottom of a hero card next to your impersonating card. And unfortunately we don't have a <laughs> card next to us, so that's going to be useless this turn. I think we get out the gate strong with the punch and a Heroic, right? Let's do that. Let's let's uh, bop this uh, dogs of war on the uh, the nose and rescue someone. I think. Yeah, let's do that. Do we need to do any of this? Once during each of your turns, you can treat uh, stars as <coughs> punches. Oh, so I could actually use it as double punch if I wanted to, and then I can uh, ignore the first damage I would take. Quicken is in play, move to his location, yeah, okay, well let's do this, alright, so, uh, Wiccan, not Wiccan, Hulkling stands up, Hulkling is going to rescue one civilian from this location and deal one damage to this uh, hound, this dog of war, then Wiccan, so Wiccan is going to have a turn. We've got two of these wild magic cards. Oh, okay. Um, if I play the heroic, that's going to be two heroics, which is not much we can do there. If I play the move and punch, I could finish off the dog and I could rescue the civilian. I could move, but then I'd be putting myself in a spot where I'm just going to get attacked by the dogs of war, right? So, hmm. That's not the best move. Maybe we do this wild action. Move to any location. Or another hero in your location draws a card. Or reveal the top card of the master plan deck. So I could get... Here's the thing, I could get speed to draw a card. But speed now... If he gets hit, like... it. Basically, if they've got three health, they're going to get taken straight out anyway, so that's not really going to fix anything. I don't really need to move anywhere, I don't think, at this stage. So do I look at the top card of the Master Plan deck? Because then I could have a turn with Iron Lad knowing where Maestro is going. I, re I really sort of wish I had this later in the game, maybe. The other thing I can do is I can give Iron Lad, for example... I could let him draw a card, meaning that he could survive getting hit. Yeah, maybe that's what I do, either give it to Wiccan or give it to uh, Iron Lad. Maybe Wiccan does it himself. Maybe if I can keep some of these guys pretty tough, because they can also block damage here and there and stuff like that, so... Uh, although he... He can only block damage if he kind of does this. Yeah, you know what, let's... Um, uh, you know what, I could have... Oh no, I could have... Uh, I needed to trigger that. Um, yeah, let's draw a card with Iron Lad. All right, so Iron Lad's just drawn this one. Let's see what we see what we're doing here. Uh, this lets him swap cards with your face-up cards in the storyline. That card becomes the one you played this turn. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, so he's got four cards. Now let's have a look. So we've done that. Let's actually have a look at what we're going to do with all these symbols here. So I could do the. Two punches and a rescue. What's old iron? Oh my God, he's got this one. Hmm. Could we do two punches and end our turn with Wiccan getting to do this? Yeah, why not? Alright, two punches and a rescue. And then we'll see what iron lad is up to. Alright. Um, so we've cleared that. Now we know that these can come back though, so it's not great. Um, you may move a henchman, oh, to this location and deal a damage to them. Oh, oh, do we want to do this? Do we think we can do enough damage with us? We've got a punch here. I don't know if we, we don't have two punches here, do we? No. Hmm. But still, we could sort of, uh... We could bring one across. Why don't we bring one from far away? 
Yeah, I mean, are they likely to come back, but you know, at least that way we can still get to some of these locations a bit quicker. Where are we, mate? We're probably more incentivized to head this way. Oops, sorry folks, uh, we just had a little bit of a technical glitch, but um, yeah, I was just deciding uh, where to take this uh, Dogs of War from if we're going to trigger this end of uh, turn location. So I think, uh, I'm, I'm sort of tempted to take it from uh, maybe over here, I don't know, or maybe even all the way over here. Do we go this way? Maybe we get rid of... Uh, from Sakaar because we might want to go there and claim action tokens and stuff if we can so yeah let's do that all right we'll take it from there plus it's fairly far away so it saves us a little bit of time hopefully um, now we can do a damage to it is that right so we move it here to this location and deal a damage so we'll do that so that's now it's only got the two two hits oh, now that's what I was forgetting I think we can take this out because We've got a punch here, and if we've got at least one punch here, that's going to be enough, so that's fine. Another thing I did forget, apologies folks, uh, is at the end of Hulkling's turn, I did forget to put down a card. Now, uh, I think what every good Hulkling needs is a cool leather jacket, so we're going to go with uh, Havoc. So, at the end of every villain turn, um, we can gain a wild token, unless we've already got one. So we can't really build up a whole, huge stack of them, but we can always sort of have one in in uh, the back uh, back pocket sort of thing, as long as we keep this version of Hulkling alive. So, all right, maybe some others are gonna have to take hits for him. Um, all right, so let's draw a card for Iron Lad. Let's let him start his turn. So he had four, he's now drawing, oh, here we go. Oh, two damage in adjacent location. Oh, this is interesting. See, that's a great one for hunting down uh, the Hulk at the end, Maestro at the end. But we could also get some damage started on some Dogs of War in other locations, or just sort of keep down our numbers of thugs as well. Oof, what are we going to do here? Um... You know what, we've got a move and a punch that might be better off later on. I think I'm going to go Concussive Bolts. And plus, if with this time travel, we might even be able to bring this one back. Yeah, so let's use it now. So, well, let's do this. Alright, so what can we do here? We can definitely do two damage in this location. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Holy moly. Alright, now we've got to be careful. Alright. Oh, is this like a mad combo, big brain move, or is this hubris? All right, so we are clearing another threat by doing that. Now we can deal two damage in an adjacent location. So we can do two damage over here. Yes. Well, where do we, we sort of want to go over here to start doing some rescuing, don't we? So let's make this location a bit safer. We'll take two damage off here with the concussive blast in an adjacent location. Then we'll use this to bring the hound here and finish it off by doing a wound to it. So man, we took out three, that's crazy. All right, <laughs> okay. I feel like things are about to swing back in Maestro's favor, but now we've got to be careful not to take out too many more of these dogs of war, so because uh, we've got to do a bunch more rescuing, don't we? Um, okay. So. But that's pretty good. I feel like that's all right. Now we've got to do a ton more rescuing. Do we have enough civilians here? One, two, three, four, five, six, ooh, seven, eight. Ooh. We, we need him to drop a few more civilians if we're going to make that count, but we'll see how we go. Well, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Let's see what Maestro has to say in reply. All right, villain turn now. I need to remember to give, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give Hulkling, this will be the one time I remember in the whole game, I'm gonna give Hulkling a uh, wild token. Let's put it on his death, because otherwise I'll still forget that. All right. Oh, he's not, oh, he didn't like that at all. He's not moving, <laughs> so it's gonna hit us. Uh, I thought we could avoid some damage there if he was gonna move away then we weren't going to get hit, but nope, he's going to hit one of us. Okay. 
Uh, and he's dropping a bunch, well the good news is he's dropping a bunch of civilians, so let's put them out now too. Technically we're not supposed to do this yet, but let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. My goodness. That's amazing. Okay. We may relocate one civilian from any location to any other location. Oh, that's a cool effect here. We can bring some of these guys from danger zones to us. Um, Alright, who's going to take a hit here? How's this going to work? We don't want to lose Havoc, because otherwise we're not getting... I'll have to put this wild token back. <coughs> uh, speed... Speed's got these cool superhuman agility cards. But we don't have any tokens built up with these yet. So maybe we let him take the hit. Keep these guys... He's got four health. Maybe we just, I don't know, we could be preventing a damage here, right? We could, we could really be stretching this out because he could, he, he could avoid it for one turn by spending this ring. But the other thing is we could use these later to sort of bring our heroes to where, uh, if Hawkling is in play, move to his location. Yeah, if we can... Maybe we can tee up some of this stuff to hunt him down. Hmm. All right, speed. Let's put these. Yeah. All right. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> You're taking a hit. Um. Costly. Because this is one health he wouldn't have had if we. And we can prevent this one, two, three times. Really. Well, I don't know. Especially with overflows and stuff possibly about to occur as well. Alright, well, let's see what happens. Okay. Speed. One, two, three, four. He wakes up. No overflows. Um, right. Uh, well, let's see what he's got. He's got a move and a punch. And what else have we given him? A punch as well. We, oh, we've got... Oh, now, here's the one where he can start gaining tokens. Interesting. All right. All right. Oh, I like this one too. Superhuman reflexes. If the next master plan card triggers an overflow, you may move to one overflowing location, rescuing or and or defeating each civilian token or thug token that cannot be added. The overflow there is cancelled. Oh, and we've got, oh my goodness, look at these cards. All right, so we've got a, <laughs> a move and a punch. We've got this superhuman speed, so double move, plus we can gain movement tokens. That's not bad. Um, then when moving, you can bring other heroes with you. Not bad. Then we've got the double wild, also very not bad. And then if the next master plan card triggers an overflow, Wow. Now there's certainly a location that looks like an overflow could be could be in the works here. But would be, would this be better to do in a turn where more of the spots are filled up? Uh, there's two of them. Hmm. I don't know. Do we just go a double wild? Maybe we just do that at this stage. Yeah, all right, let's just get cracking with this, I think. Give ourselves as much opportunity to take him out while he's got lower health. So I'm going to rescue twice and punch in this location, I think. So that's one, two, three. So two wilds used as heroics, one used as a punch. I'm not going to get cute with the uh, Project Pegasus, though, because I don't want to trigger this yet. Right. Um, now, Hulkling's got a wild here. Um, and a Hulkling, whoops, sorry. Whoopsie, whoopsie. <laughs> here's, his, here's his deck. All right, so, what's his Excelsior thing do you can... Um, I think I've just drawn another meta metamorphic adaptation, so I'm not sure which one I've drawn, but you can see one's got a... Uh, heroic one's got a punch. There you go. 
So this is where I can use the perform actions at, on the uh, symbols at the bottom. So basically it gives me an extra rescue here, which is pretty handy, right? Because that's what I need to be doing. So that's, um, let's do that I guess, shall we? Um, so put these, what have we got, a, a star? A, yeah, let's do that. All right, so this will give me two stars plus the wild I can use to move over here. So I'm gonna do that, I think. Do I wanna move? I don't really wanna move here, do I? Let's do, yeah, we'll spend that. I'm gonna play Metamorphic Adaptation. I'm going to, oh, I've got these as well. Oh man, all right, so I'm gonna use one wild to move. Uh, this is Hulkley, yep. Uh, then I'm going to use, so one was to move. I'm going to use one, two, and the token to do three rescues. Wow, one, two, three. Now we're getting close. All right, so this is sort of where I'm like, Ugh, are we in a situation? How do we make this work to our best advantage? All right. So, it is, and we don't get a wild token until the end of Maestro's turn, all right. Uh, we don't want to move anyone to our location. We don't want to give the sword away. And it's Wiccan's turn, and then it'll be Maestro's turn. All right, so Wiccan has drawn a double heroic, but we've got a heroic there, so that's not very useful because we need to move. Uh, so we can move and punch. And do a star there. I don't really want to use that wild magic yet, so I'm going to move. Oh man, do I want to do this? The wild magic is a good card to use, but see what I'm I'm hoping what I can do with the wild magic is somehow tee it up with Iron Lad's card. This one let, lets you, until the beginning of your next turn, you cannot take any damage, and for each damage you would take, punch in your location. So I'd love for Maestro to be vulnerable, to somehow know, so we know where he's going with Wiccan, and then with Iron Lad, arrange it so that we put ourselves with Rick Jones, in that location that he's going to go to and then block all the damage and hit him back with it. <laughs> That's my big master plan, but I don't know if I can pull it off. But to pull it off, I need the wild magic card. And I've already used one of them. Using heroics isn't gonna help, but see, doing this puts me at risk of losing the wild heroic, doesn't it? Because now if I go here, yes, I can do a damage to a dog of war and I can do a rescue. But the problem is, uh, then I'm on my lonesome and I can't choose anyone else to take a hit. I know I'm going to take at least one hit from the Dog of War. This is if he does a bam, but I'm assuming he's doing a lot of bamming. But now I'm sort of on my lonesome here, aren't I? Hmm. Well, I guess we just risk it. Let's just see what happens. I think we had a pretty uh, lucky turn being able to race this up, so... Let's uh, let's see what we can do. Hmm. So I've got to do two more damage to at least one of the dogs of war, and I have to uh, rescue one civilian. Okay, not getting under pressure. Uh, so let's have a look. Problem being, Wiccan goes next. So Wiccan just is going here. If we do this, then. Chances are, in the next round, it'll be very easy for us to finish these guys off. So, it'll be Iron Lad and Speed. And then that will set up the duo. And that's not really what I want, is it? Oh, and hold on. Uh, as long as this card is face up and strong, end of each one turn again. Token. And I've spent that token, so I think this wild, whenever a hero anywhere uses or discards an action token, place them here. So yeah, that wild goes here. All right. Um, so do I actually want to...
do that damage. Um, I've been taken out twice, right? See, it should be. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know. Do I, is it worth spinning my wheels a little bit to try and set this combo up? Because then, if he, if he's in the first turn, uh, if he's in one group, then he's going to look at the deck. Then Maestro will go, and then he'll go and yeah. So I need to set it up differently. Okay. Maybe he just spends a turn. Hulkling is in play. Move to his location. Oh. You know what I could do is, so I could still have a relatively worthwhile turn, play this one down. So I still get to play that. Move to Hulkling's location. So I'll use the wedding band. <laughs> Is this a good use of it? Yeah, okay. Then... Use my move punch to do a... I think I wasn't supposed to take that off there, was I? Uh, yeah. So I, I put the other one here, but yeah, that, that, I think that's right. So I'll punch these two. No, punch one of them, I think it is, is it? Yeah, punch one. Rescue this guy here. And I'll take this wild token. And now I've got the wild token, I can use that to get the, the ring back. Plus, I'm not standing in a spot that I'm going to get hit by the dogs of war. Like, if I get hit by a, whole, a maestro, I get hit by a maestro, right? But... Um, Oh no, no. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Recharge at the beginning of your turn. If you are Hulkling, discard an action token. Oh no. <laughs> um, okay. Because... What does it say? You may discard... Oh, you may discard a card from your hand at the bottom of your deck to gain up to two action tokens. Oh, so I don't even want to pick that up. Hold on a second. No, no, I've got to read that. <laughs> I just was assuming I could pick this up, but I don't want to damage myself to pick that up. So, sorry guys. Oof. Let's go back, back, back. Let's just waste a move. Let's just waste that. This might seem silly, but let's put uh, this guy back here, I think. And this guy back here. Yeah. Yeah, is it worth wasting a turn doing that? I don't know. I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, Hulk, Maestro. What's Maestro up to? Move counterclockwise to the next location with the hero with the least cards in hand. So either way, that's going to be, um, Oh, to the location with the hero with the least cards. Well, that's three, three, and three, so in this case it's going to be Hulkling, because that's the next one, yep. Um, yeah. Move counterclockwise. Oh, I could, have, I could have stayed there and I would have been safe. Oh, well. Hulkling takes the hit. Didn't realise he was moving counterclockwise as well. All right, so Hulkling is going to take three damage here unless we use the ring. Let's use the ring to block one damage. So that gives us... Uh, we take two hits here. All right, let's just lose that then, I guess. Whoa. All right. There we go. Took three damage, but uh, we reduced one. We were able to block the first, first hit with the ring. Alright. Um, then he's placing a bunch of thugs down. One here, one here, oopsie, and one over here. And these guys are all banding but they're not hitting anyone, so we're okay. Alrighty then. Um, so, Hulkling gets another wild token. Uh, I don't think we'll get this wild token um, situation for, for very much longer. Um, 
All right, we'll draw a... No, hold on, it's not Hulkling's turn though, is it? Um, it is Iron Lad's turn, I think. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we'll draw a single card. We have a big hand of cards here. Aha, uh -huh. all right, Iron Lad. What are you up to, my friend? What do you want to do? So, Iron Lad, do you want to make this thing trigger in your turn? No, you don't do. We want to trigger it in Speed's turn. Because then, in Speed's turn, no, we don't. Do we want to trigger in Hulkling's turn? I'm not sure what's going on here. Alright, so. Let me think. Iron Lad. If you trigger it now, it's going to be Maestro's turn after speed. Uh, we don't want that. Hulkling, if you do it, it's going to be Maestro's turn. Speed, if you do it, it's still going to be after your turn. Then if we do it after Hulkling, then we can... Man, I think we're sort of stuck either way. I don't know if I can get this... How do I get it to... Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. So I have to do it on another, another go-round, don't I? Uh, which is not great. I think in that case, I sort of wasted it. I, I think I've just got to go for it. I think I've got to forget this plan and just go for it. So, I can't be spending, like, multiple cycles waiting for that first opportunity. Okay, so let's just get this done then. Um, now that I've made this decision, that makes that turn even worse, because I did nothing with him. Um, Alright, well, shall we just use the energy blasts? I think so. I think so, because what we'll do is we'll play this. We will... Oh no, we don't have. I thought I thought there was someone to rescue in here, but there's not. Hmm. Ah, now hold on a second here. Hulkling could have also removed any other location, but I wouldn't have known known about that. All right, so well, maybe I can set something up for. Oh, interesting. Hmm. What if I play this anyway? Iron Lad goes here. Potentially we could still have Iron Lad. I mean, if Iron Lad is the one that gets hit, that could be good. Iron Lad's going to go over here. Or is he? Maybe he does two punches. I just wish I could do more with the... Um, more with the speed here. Two punches. Hmm. Yep. Then, do I do this trick of bringing this guy in and just finishing him off? And then Speed just has to rescue two civilians. Yeah. Alright, let's do that. Or does speed do that? No, let's do that with speed actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry. What I'll do, I'll leave that on... A second. This is in your location. Okay, so I have to do it. Energy blast still two damage against a single target in your location. Oh, okay. 
That's actually way better to use against um, Maestro, isn't it? But I can use my time travel on that, I think. So, yeah, let's do that. Two damage, move in, I'll do a rescue. Then speed is going to... <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm really, I'm really tr trying to big brain this too much, aren't I? Um, now, you know what I've realized we haven't left speed. I, I didn't draw, I thought speed had a lot more heroics in his deck. I didn't draw any heroics. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> so I guess we're not making him uh, vulnerable right now. Okay. If the master plan, the next master plan triggers an overflow, we could maybe try and do that. We've got a movement. Okay, movement token. This turn when moving, you may bring other heroes with you. Oh, interesting. No, I want to save that one because that could be good for me getting around to him. I could like pick up Rick Jones with me and and get to get to that location. Although I could use this to get myself and Iron Lad to Rick Jones. Maybe we do that because we know that Iron Lad. Yeah, maybe we do that. Maybe Hulkling can do something. All right. What we gotta do? We just gotta do a rescue and a something else. All right, two movement. All right, so let's do this. We'll gain a movement token. We'll move um, speed and iron lad to this location, and then we'll move them to this location because this is where Rick Jones is going to appear. All right. We didn't get to do any actual punching or anything like that, unfortunately. But, now what we're going to do is, Hulkling actually gets his turn. He's gonna draw a card. He's got another one of these metamorphic adaptations. So, um, what's the, it's the, okay, so I can do a star, I can, oh no. I can't make him vulnerable, can I? Oh, well, can I? Um, so I've got a right. So do I use this movement? I've got. Oh, I've got two movement here. What am I talking about? Um, so yes, I'll do this one. I'll play the punch. Oof. And then the wild. So I've got two movement. One, two. I'll use the punch. Get rid of the dog of war. All right. But he's going to put a whole bunch of these back now. <laughs> uh, we've made him under pressure. Not great. But hopefully, if I've played my cards right here, I've got this wild, so two moves. I'll use the wild to rescue this civilian. Therefore, well, thereby not only making him under pressure, but also vulnerable, which also triggers... Rick Jones. So now Rick Jones is going to appear here. Oh, and I didn't show you guys. This is Rick Jones, uh, or David Hasselhoff, as I like to call him. This is the uh, the cool new mini um, from uh, Minis from Mars. A fantastic Etsy store here in Oz, and uh, yeah, it makes a really great range of. Um, sort of upgrade tokens and things like that. So we've got a little harmonica in the back pocket. I don't know if you can make that out. But uh, yeah, he's ready to go. So here he goes. We've, <laughs> we've got at least one model on the board painted. All right. So we have to get Rick Jones into Maestro's location to be able to deal decent damage. Otherwise, he's blocking two damage. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do now. My whole plan was around sort of getting to this point. Uh, my plan around Iron Lad isn't going to work now because now I believe what's going to happen is... Well, hold, uh, maybe it will. Hold on a second. He's vulnerable now, right? Maybe this worked out. Alright, so I mean, we'll see what happens, but Maestro is about to go. Then it'll be these two. Oh yeah, that's the combo we want. Alright. Well, let's see what um, Maestro has to say about this. Okay. Oh no. Unleash the dog. He's moved. Oh, well, hold on a second. This could be really good. 
Could it? Um, why is that flip back up? Did I choose not to use this? No, I did use it, didn't I? Because I moved over here. Or did I not? Where is he? Why is he over here? Oh yeah, I chose not to use that. I didn't go to uh, Hulkling's location. So yep, yeah, alright. So, Maestro goes over here. Okay, this is cool. Because Rick Jones is there. Because, hold on, let's just make sure Rick Jones is here. Because when a hero is KO'd, uh, he doesn't activate his man, he gets the health. When two missions are complete, place the Rick Jones. So that's what we did. We did that before Maestro's turn started. Two missions were complete. We placed Rick Jones in the location opposite to Maestro's. Now Maestro is going directly to Rick Jones. Haha, -ha, you fool. All right, so, but unfortunately, he's about to do a big old bam. So he's hitting one of us for three. Now, who are the options? We've got speed can take a hit, and that would give him three health. Or, Wiccan can take a hit. Now here's the thing, Mr. Wiccan. You've got three cards, but we can block a damage. Use on a villain. Oh no, but we're standing in a spot with Dogs of War. Oh no, but hold on. Speed can take that hit, right? Okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> hold on. So we'll block one damage. We'll take two, two damage instead. Or do we need to use this now? Because hold on. Wait, Iron Lad is in this spot. Wait, 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 wasn't the whole point? <gasps> wait, I don't need to do this, this is crazy. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> wait, <laughs> hold on. Has, has he triggered my plan straight away? I keep thinking, oh, it's not speed in there, it's Iron, it's iron Lad. That, okay, so it's not, sorry, it is speed in there. It's, oh my God, it's not Wiccan. Wiccan is not in there, so I couldn't have used Wiccan and blocked the thing and all that sort of stuff because he's not even there. It's between Iron Land and Speed. And this whole thing is I want Iron Land to get hit here, right? Don't I? All right, so I can trigger this. Oh, no, I can't because I didn't play this. <laughs> I didn't think this was going to happen soon enough. No. Oh, man. My big brain move and I didn't actually trigger the card. Use on your... I didn't think this would be happening so quickly. Oh, man. Okay, right, so in that case, who do I want taking the hit here? Do we actually want it to be Iron Lad? Maybe we want it to be Iron Lad. Because if he gets hit three times, he's not going to be taken out. That's what we'll do. And then I'll keep my time travel alive here. All right, yeah, that's not too bad. So he did three damage. Now the Dogs of War can do one damage to, let's do it to speed. He's got two of these moving punches. Let's use one of those. All right. Um, all right. Anyone else in a location with Dogs of War? No. Now the Dogs of War come back out though. So the next two clockwise locations. So unfortunately, we've got Dogs of War coming back out uh, back over in Sakaar. So we can't pick this um, this up here. All right. Um, now I think I was supposed to spend another one here too, wasn't I? Because uh, I've, I've definitely used Hulkling's um, Wild again. Alright, so we'll put another one back on because he's still hanging around here. Okay, and then he's going to put out some more civilians. So one, two, three. But he didn't manage to KO anyone, which is handy. All right, so now we're looking good. We can get some payback on him. All right, how much health has he got? He's got seven. Let's try and get as much done as we can in this turn. All right, so it's Wiccan's turn, I believe. All right, so Wiccan and Iron Lad. Right. Wiccan's been given a punch there. So what we want to do is play this wild magic one, I think. So what that will let us do is if we play that, 
We can head to Rick Jones's spot. We've got a movement with the wild. We can jump in. Dangerous being in a spot with dogs of war, but I mean, it is what it is. We'll do a damage to Maestro. Then... We'll trigger this so we can reveal the top card of the master plan deck. So we can see what Maestro is going to do. Maestro is going to stay where he is. He's going to put a bunch of civilians out, which will cause an overflow. But let's see what happens here. All right, so... All right, so we know that's going to be what's happening. And he's, yeah, he's putting... Sorry, guys, I should have shown you the card. So he's not moving. He is bamming. He's going to do a bunch of stuff here. So what we want to do... Sorry, that goes here. Um, all right, let me see if I can work this out. So we've done one damage to him. Um, now, do I want to jump away? Because then he's not, so we're gonna get a turn. He's gonna stay where he is, and these two will get a turn then he's possibly going to move away again, so maybe I do want to move out of this spot just to be one less person getting hit with a dog of war. Um, was I supposed to draw a card? I think I was. Have I been hit by anything with Wiccan? I don't think so. I think I was supposed to draw a card, so I've got another uh, punch there. Alright, um, because what I can do, I can now trigger this um, and head to this spot, and then I'd be ending my turn. You may discard one card or action token to move to any other location with a henchman and deal damage to them. Oh. Hmm. Nah. I think I'll just stay where I am. I don't know. Is that a good idea? Just be one extra person to potentially soak up damage. Alright, I think I'll stay where I am. Alright, so, we've done that. Now, Iron Lad is going to draw a card. He's got himself a wild. But the important thing is here, he's going to trigger this. Use on your turn. Until the beginning of your next turn, you cannot take any damage, and for each damage you would take, punch in your location. So now I can do, I think, four damage to Maestro, because I can take the hit from the Dog of War, and I can take the hit from Maestro. Yeah. And... I'm going to play Time Travel. Now, am I going to play Time Travel? Swap this card with any card, face up cards in the storyline, and I could basically just do a double punch. But that's not going to give, it's just going to give a movement. I definitely don't want to move away with Iron Lad because I know Maestro is not moving, so we want to leave Iron Lad there as a viable target for this. Okay. Two punches. Well, let's see, what could I do with this? I could do two punches, and then he would do... I think that would be enough. I think that would be enough. All right, we can take him out. I think so. Watch this. Okay, so uh, we play Time Travel. Swap this card with any of your face-up cards in the storyline. So I'll use Energy Beam. All right, let's do two damage to him. Plus, if I got, I can use that too, can't I, the wild? So I can do three damage to him? Oh yeah, we've got him. For sure. Okay. Then, one, two, three. Um, then he goes, so we've triggered this. Maestro goes. He doesn't move anywhere. The dogs of war and Maestro are here. Maestro is going to bam. He does three damage to Iron Lad. Iron Lad blocks it all and does three damage back. And Rick Jones is in the location. One, two, three. And even if we had an extra health, we could have done it with the um, the Dogs of War attack. We could have done some damage as well. So I think we've done it. Oh. <laughs> all that worrying and back and forth, back and forth. 
Sorry guys, that probably wasn't the most enjoyable uh, playthrough um, with all my sort of second guessing and back and forthing and all that sort of stuff, but I had this plan, I had this idea of like, man, this neurokinetic armor, if I can tee it up where Wiccan can like know where he's going and then try and work it out so that Iron Lad and Rick Jones are in that same spot, we can do some big damage to him. And it just happened that Maestro made it really easy for us that uh, he ended up being in that same spot. And uh, yeah, Rick Jones didn't need to do much, did he? But um, there we go. So zap, 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 down he goes. Uh, trick or treat, and uh, he got the trick. So that was really, uh, really cool. What a cool, cool team the uh, the Young Avengers are. These, these guys, I mean, they had a lot of uh, tricks up their sleeve and that sort of thing. And I probably, because I was sort of trying to sort of hold off uh, and save some of them for uh, keeping myself alive and, and that sort of thing, I probably didn't use a lot of them to their full extent, but uh, some really useful combos and stuff here. This, um, you can see what sort of possibilities Hulkling has with, you know, you can pretty much choose any starting hand card and against a villain that only targets like one character a turn, um, being able to, like, manipulate who the characters are that are getting hit, uh, really makes this quite useful because you can sort of really hold off on getting, uh, getting taken out. Um, so get, you get to keep that ability for quite a while, so that's pretty good. Um, and I'm sure there's all sorts of crazy, um, starting hand cards that you could come up with that would make some good combos against certain villains and things like that too. So, um, yeah, that's, an, that's, a, that's a pretty cool cool character. Uh, Wiccan was, yeah, that those wild magic's pretty handy. Um, this Iron Lad's equipment card. Well, there you go, folks. Another game where equipment has been fun and pivotal as well. Um, so, that was pretty good. <laughs> that's probably better than the Double Wild. You cannot take any damage, and for each damage you would take, punch in your location. Wow. Then turn this face down. Well, we have to turn it face down. But, very cool. Speed, I feel like I didn't really get to see a lot of what Speed can do, but he sort of was pivotal in getting us all to this spot, wasn't he? Uh, where was that card? Well, this one here, he had the double move, and he could bring other heroes with us. Yeah, that was good. So he got us to where we needed to be, where Rick Jones was going to show up. Very handy. I like it. That was, yeah, pretty cool. I, that was a... It, it was probably painful to watch me sort of trying to get to it, but it all, all came together pretty well. So I've heard, and I, I really wanted to have a good plan against Maestro, because I had heard he's really tricky, really tough. And I think that's true. He, he was worrying me there quite a bit. Um... And dealing three damage, uh, and you know all these locations deal the damage and, and that sort of thing as well. The only the only thing is that I guess you know only one hero is taking damage from any one source sort of thing. So you can kind of manipulate it a little bit, but still that's pretty rough. And then yeah, if you don't have an answer to getting Rick Jones nice and quickly where you need him to be, that could be really painful, especially if he's like damaging you every turn bringing more of these dogs of war back so no matter where you are someone's getting whittled away there um yeah that could be that could be a really a lot more of a nasty fight than i think we showed off there so um but wow yeah that was a good one what a what a great what a great great uh, showcase of some of these combos and, and stuff like that so i hope that was uh at least interesting in that sense i hope, I hope you enjoyed uh, how we how we got to our victory there uh, i'm really really hoping i haven't forgotten any special rules or any anything that we, we missed there, so we weren't um, blocking Maestro's damage there because we were always in a spot with Rick Jones, so yeah, heroes can take Rick Jones wherever they want. If Rick Jones is not in Maestro's location, Maestro ignores the first two damage, so yeah, we, I think we're okay there, so. All right, well, let me know, eagle-eyed uh, fans, if I've missed anything, made any mistakes, that sort of thing, um, but uh, uh, that was that was pretty, <laughs> that was, we made pretty short work of him, actually, didn't we? Um, and we took him out on his turn, which is even more impressive. So there you go. The mighty maestro has fallen and the young Avengers have uh, stepped up to the plate. So 
All right, the ball's in your court, Avengers. You have to <laughs> have to do a little bit better than that. But holy moly, that was how many? One, two, three, four, five, five villain turns. Wow, that was pretty good. Well, thank you guys. Um, I think the next uh, next battle will probably be. Um, I don't know if we'll put an, uh, put up one another one this weekend because uh, going back to to work soon and that sort of thing as well. So it'll probably be the next week, the following weekend. But uh, you never know. See how we go. I hope folks enjoyed the um, my top eight uh, drafting games. Uh, so. Um, down the track, I'll probably do another one of those top eight or top five sort of um, lists as well. So we'll see how we go with that one. If you've got any requests for uh, any particular types of games you want to see from my collection, let me know. But um, I just thought that was one that was sort of on my mind recently because um, I played that um, Let's Go to Japan game and, and I really, really like It's a Wonderful World. So that was a good one to show off. But uh, yeah, next next battle for Marvel United, we'll probably show another homebrew. that We're up to sort of with our back and forth homebrew and official content. I think we're up to a homebrew one now, so um, we'll see what we what, what we've got with that one. Had a lot of fun with um, uh, the um, Man Spider and Cassandra Nova recently, plus the um, um, entrance exam for My Hero Academia. So lots of great great uh, projects going. One thing I wanted to point out is that uh, there's some folks. I think a, a designer by the name of uh, Board Board Ghost or Board Ghost Games or something like that. Apologies, I'm getting that that name a little bit wrong, but um, uh, has been making some really cool um, variants or extra modes um, for Marvel United, adding things like uh, side schemes and you know make your villains a little bit harder. Also, um, they've designed a mode where you've got like um, sort of alternate dimension travel, so you have like a ring of uh, locations that are around the outside. So I think I'm not sure if it's alternate dimensions or maybe time travel or like. Uh, alternate timeline or something like that but yeah you have a whole extra ring of locations you can travel back and forth between and stuff so um and it's got a whole bunch of rules there so check out the marvel united discord um if you're interested in that or the simon united discord i should say um because that that's a, it looks like a quite a fun uh couple of modes and stuff so maybe down the track uh we'll be able to get those to the table here but i just thought i'd let you know just in the meantime because it's probably going to take a while to sort of print a bunch of these new <laughs> homebrews out um that uh, if there's anything I see that, that pops up, I think, oh, that, that's a new interesting thing, or you know, there's a new designer that's uh, showing off their stuff, I'll try and at least mention it, even if I don't get it to the table uh, straight away. So, yeah, well, anyway, thank you very much, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, certainly the Young Avengers did, <laughs> Maestro not so much, but uh, enjoy your, uh, your, the rest of your October. Um, I don't know if I'll be back before uh, Halloween or not, so if, if I'm not, uh, happy Halloween to all those folks that, uh, that celebrate, and um, yeah, have a good one. Meep Monkey out. See ya.